So the question then becomes, how do you make yourself valuable in the future? How do you make sure that you continue to be smart? That is the voice of futurist and number one best-selling author, Mike Walsh, and he'll be our guest on today's Super You podcast. I'm Al Roker. I'm here with the Mutual Man. Word of mouth is now world of mouth. Because someone asked, what's the social play? What's the mobile play? Our clients and customers are telling us, hey, we love what you're doing here. Are you doing more of that today? What I'm telling you here today, I'm not suggesting we get rid of face to face. Digital leaders are made, not born. Well, I'm super excited for today's guest. He's a good friend. We ran into each other at the airport of all places, which is kind of crazy when I get into his story as we get into questions because he is all over the world. He travels 300 days a year, but it is Mike Walsh. He's a global futurist who, as the CEO of his company Tomorrow, helps business leaders and Fortune 500 companies thrive in this era of disruptive technology change. And Mike has given over 1,000 speeches over the last 10 years. So I couldn't be more excited, be a little longer than our normal format because of my excitement. And we'll dig into it. And there's a lot that we're going to go over, but it's great to have you here, Mike. Welcome. Uh, It's great to be on your show, Eric. It's it's good to see you. Uh, I think if it wasn't serendipity, it would have taken us forever to get together. So uh, I'm glad. It is perfect timing because you have a new book out, Algorithmic Leader. And tell me about that. What is an algorithmic leader? Oh, where do I start? I mean, maybe the subtitle will help people. Uh, the, the book subtitle is How to Be Smart When Machines Are Smarter Than You. And what I really want to do is write a hopeful, optimistic, and practical book for leaders of all kinds to know what to do next in this time when people are saying that robots are coming for our jobs, that automation is going to destroy industries, and, well, that we should lock up our children because the, uh, the superintelligences are coming. And then I've listened to you a lot, obviously, and I've seen you out there and you mentioned that, hey, don't really talk about millennials per se, but look at the next generation, Gen Z. And and why is that? Why do you stress that to a lot of audiences? Uh, I tell that to people because uh, we often talk about millennials like they're the future. But the reality is, is that millennials are the present. I, I mean, they've won the present. They own the present. Uh, they've got everyone worrying about them now. But by 2030, they're going to be as old and as, and as miserable as the rest of us. So we should, uh, we should really think about who's going to inherit that world of 2030. And for me, it's, it's, the, it's the kids of today. It's the eight-year-olds. I mean, these are the terrifying people. And any of, any of you that have young kids, and I know you do, uh, it's amazing when you actually just look at the way they use technology, the way they make decisions, the way they communicate and, and consume content. They are as different to the millennials as the millennials are to us. That's well said. And so I look at you and I go, you, if you, you could see Mike, go Google him, but go out there and Google him just like my kids would say. He is looks like a futurist. He's got the voice. Um, but most importantly, he understands where we're moving to, what the future looks like. Before we get into that, which we certainly are going to do that, I didn't read in your bio some very interesting things. So Mike is a global nomad. So that means he is traveling the world 300 days a year. He has homes in London, Sydney, and also in Hong Kong. Now, a lot of our listeners out there are digital nomads or want to become global nomads. So is there any tips or advice on how you can do that? (laughs) Be sure that you want to, Um, because I, I think traveling continuously is not always as glamorous as it might seem. And requires a lot of logistics and good running shoes. Uh, in that you, you need to be in constant motion and you need to understand the way airports work, the way tax systems work. Uh, you have to understand your own health. It's, it's incredibly complex, but if you can pull it off, it's incredibly rewarding because you, 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 you lose that sense of permanency. Uh, you don't feel that the world is made up of discrete countries and cities because you literally wake up in one city and you fall asleep in another. It's, you're in constant motion. Have you ever woken up and not know where you are? All Just, the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, all the time. But uh, fortunately, one of the superpowers you have to develop is the ability to sleep anywhere and under any circumstances. So I'm lucky I don't get jet lag. I, I, can, I can pretty much instantly adjust. Uh, it'll probably catch up to me one day. I'll just wake up one day and look like Yoda. Um, I think most Chinese people do at some point. So I'm, I'm, go, I'm go, being half Chinese, I will inherit that. Uh, but I think the, the most important thing, 
and most challenging thing about being a global nomad is actually your social network. When you don't, when you're not part of anywhere, people stop including you in their plans. So you actually have to be very proactive about developing a, a, a network around the world, so you've got people to see and to keep tabs on you, and that you know you keep the journey interesting as opposed to just you know sitting in you know, drab hotels and riding the minibar and watching Netflix. <laughs> and you've mentioned this before, I believe, is that you look at the future and everyone has this mindset that it's scientists, it's technology, but in fact, you say it's more anthropology. <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, when you ask people to think about the future, they have a, uh, they, t they tend to think of gadgets and uh, they'll have a view about whether to buy the iPhone this year or it's worth upgrading to the new PlayStation or the Xbox or what life might be like when they have 5G speeds rather than 4G. These are all actually relatively unimportant um, shifts to the world. They don't lead to necessarily massive transformations. The future really arrives in all those small decisions that we make as human beings and the second and third order unintended consequences of those decisions. Uh, they shape societies, they shape our organizations, they shape us as leaders. Uh, they're very human, they're very analog. Uh, and you, you, you discover those things in you know, a street market in Brazil or in India or, uh, or in Mexico City or the, the places where you would least expect to find the future. As we look at your book, Algorithmic Leader, people out there want to know, are we going to still have jobs? Are robots going to take over the world or are we going to still have jobs? If you think about where we've come as, as a civilization, there's always new technologies. There are new tools and it changes the way we do things. And there's a period of adjustment and then people evolve, adapt and move on. Even in the last computer revolution, it wasn't that computers took jobs away from people. People with computers took jobs away from people who refused or were unable to use them. And what tends to happen, whether it's the introduction of automation in manufacturing or the Industrial Revolution or the ATM, is that new technology will come in. It changes the value that human beings create, which means we need to redraw the lines of what a job is. And I think we're in that moment now. Uh, I don't think AI will destroy work, but it will mean that certain types of work really shouldn't be done by people anymore. And that's routine, transactional, easily definable work. And whether you talk to a bank or an insurance company, the leaders of those companies will tell you today they're making massive investments in robotic process automation. So very simple, routine tasks will be done by machines. So the question then becomes, how do you make yourself valuable in the future? How do you make sure that you continue to be smart? And you talk about computational learning. So everyone with kids out there today, it's what should we be teaching our kids in school? Because what I was just talking with the superintendent, the top superintendents in the United States, I was just at a meeting with them and they said, look, everything we're teaching right now is gonna be obsolete. So we're trying to teach them a different way to learn. Talk a little bit about computational learning, what it is and what does yeah. that mean? So, I mean, you, you, the example you gave about your kids is, is a perfect example of this. Why do you need te to teach kids to remember facts when their memory is Google? Uh, why do you need ki to teach kids, um, you know, how, how to do arithmetic or remembering things when, you know, they can get Alexa to set a timer? So what you actually need to teach kids is how to approach a problem, how to separate its strategy from its execution. So how do you break it down into small pieces? and then look at it again in a creative way and go, okay, now I need to develop a strategy for solving this. I can use technology as part of that. I can use, some, I can use computation for the heavy lifting. And that's a, a, if you scale that up, that's exactly what those kids will be doing when they join a company and they're working in logistics or marketing. It's how do you creatively break a problem down, use first principles uh, to kind of analyze it and then think of a smart way to tackle it. Actually, a good way of teaching kids that is Minecraft. You know, Minecraft teaches kids a lot of the, the basics of logic and, and how to approach problem solving. But when we get older, we need to be even more advanced. Uh, you know, one of the, the differences between a traditional leader and a new generation one is the difference between someone who is deterministic and probabilistic. Uh, we, we teach people to be deterministic. Like, if something happens, do this. Uh, if you kind of want to do a marketing strategy, you should copy these companies who did this. But in the probabilistic world, 
it's different. In, in probability, you can be 70% right. And, and I think people struggle with that because if you think about our time on the savannah, if a tiger is chasing you, you can't be probabilistic about it. It's like that tiger's not going to eat me at 70% chance. It's just you just run, right? Teenage girls understand this, though. I mean, they, they don't have friends. They have frenemies. So they can understand that their girlfriend is 70% their friend and 30% and 30 not. So we have to teach leaders to see the world in the same way, that as new information arrives, they can update their mental model. Um, but it's very different than just seeing the world as, as, as black and white. Is there any ask that you have for the audience? Or how can we find out more about you? I, you know, I would really love to connect with the audience. So please follow me on Twitter, uh, on Instagram. Uh, it's both, my hashtag on both is Mike Walsh. So I'm easy to find. I've got a brand new book out, as you all know. Uh, please go and buy it on Amazon. Uh, it's also uh, available on Audible. Uh, I went and, and did the uh, task of locking myself in a studio in London for three days and read the thing myself, which turns out it was harder than I thought. But that means you can listen to my dulcet tones for six hours, which uh, <laughs> I'm sure is a, is a wonderful incentive. Yeah, well, it's a great voice. I mean, I, I may have you read my books. So that'd be wonderful. That's it for today's Super You podcast. I couldn't have been more excited to have Mike Walsh in here again. That's Mike and then W-A-L-S-H. Also, make sure you check out algorithmicleader.com. Again, that's Mike Walsh, good friend, but most importantly, great person, amazing stuff. Check out his stuff, check out his books, check out all of his stuff on YouTube. Uh, you will not be disappointed.